As a community, we take time to pause and give thanks for the gift of mothers. Shining a light on the gift, shadows fall and we acknowledge the shadows too. We celebrate and give thanks, each of us, for our birth mother, the mother who carried us in her womb and brought us into life. We lament, each of us, separation from our mother at different times, through conflict, hurt, distance of place, death. We lament, seek to forgive, and be forgiven. We celebrate and give thanks, each of us, for those who have been as mothers to us, our aunts and pseudo-aunts, big sisters, friends, mentors and teachers, the women who have nurtured, taught, encouraged, shaped us with love. We lament, we lament each of us, the women who have caused us pain, who have abandoned or neglected us, mistakenly or intentionally caused us harm. We lament the hurt we've caused to women, our friends, colleagues, neighbours, sisters, aunts and mothers. We lament seek to forgive and be forgiven. We celebrate and give thanks together for the women in our communities. That women and men are different invites us into partnership, invites us to share the burdens and the joys of life. For the many strengths of women, the gifts of peacemaking, nurture, education, entrepreneurship, healing, wisdom, creativity, endurance, collaboration, physicality, and so much more, we are grateful. We lament together that women are still discounted because they are women in our culture and in others. That the difference between women and men is seen as threatening, a power struggle, a competition or a hierarchy is not, we know, your dream for us. We lament, seek to forgive and be forgiven. We celebrate those of us who are mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers, the joy and privilege it is to collaborate with you in the creation of life. We give thanks for our children, their uniqueness, the delight we find in watching and helping them grow. We lament those of us who are not mothers and want to be, or who are mothers of children who have died or are estranged. We lament and have no words for our grief. We celebrate, we give thanks for you, our mothering God, whose wings enfold us like those of a mother hen, who gives birth to all that lives, who loves fiercely, protectively, and with great delight. We celebrate what we know of you as like a mother. We lament our turning from you and causing you pain, our rejection of your gifts of life and love in so many ways. We seek your forgiveness again and again. Again and again, you welcome us home as a mother welcomes her children. Again and again, you celebrate us, your children, and delight in watching and helping us grow. 
we come now under your wings and into the warmth of your love. Hear now, Hear now precious, precious child, child, from your, from your mothering, mothering God. God. You are forgiven, are forgiven and you, you are, are loved. loved. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. <clears throat> you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the truth, the way, the, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Wow, what a scripture. An amazing scripture. There's just so much in this, this short passage. And this, is, this tells us, I think, too, of a mother in God, a God who loves us all no matter what, no matter what we do, no matter who we are, no matter how much we do, no matter where we go in our lives, no matter what our thoughts might be, no matter what our I guess our, our sin might be, where we've strayed from God and, and not come to God when we most need to. And this is a very special passage to me also because it's a passage, it's the passage that actually brought me to the understanding of Christ and to God way back in 1968. So it's a very special. I'll tell you a little bit about that later. But... I wanted to answer or at least a, a look at three questions that this poses. Number one, it tells us that Jesus is the only way. Jesus says is the way, the truth and the life. And he also says in this scripture, or it's recorded that he says, and no one comes to the Father but by me. I think, unfortunately, this is sometimes misquoted. I think it's taken out of context and uh, given to us as if everybody in the whole world, no matter whether they've heard of Jesus or not, is meant to somehow miraculously believe in Jesus without knowing and therefore they'll be saved. But there may be some truth to that, but I want to challenge your thinking just a little bit more and broaden it out, stretch it out a little bit. If God is our loving father, if God is the one who loves us, if God is our loving mother, the one who loves us so much and loves everyone on the planet 
and all of God's creation. Would this necessarily be such an awkward way to go about finding God? In context, this was spoken to the disciples. Thomas challenged Jesus and said, well, you know, we don't know the way. And Jesus is saying, you know, follow him. But, but, Thomas, but they say, but I don't know the way. And then Jesus, in context, to the disciples is saying, I'm the way. Hello, look at me. I'm the way. I've shown you the way. This is the way to reach the Father. And so he's directing them to him very intimately, not generally. Intimately. This is an intimate discussion between Jesus and the disciples. And it's not just something that by believing in Jesus as being the Son of God that you escape hell. Hell's not even part of this discussion here. Jesus is not mentioning hell. Thomas is not mentioning hell. None of the other disciples are mentioning hell. They're just wanting to know the way to find the Father. That's all they're wanting from this. And in this scripture also, Jesus doesn't say no one can be saved unless he thinks in his mind that I am the Son of God and that I am dying for your sins. Doesn't say that at all. You might find other scriptures that um, are more, I guess, expressive when it comes to those type of topics. But in this particular scripture, it's not saying that. Not at all. And Jesus says, I am the way. It's directly in context that he's telling the disciples they actually know how to get there. They've been shown. They've been walking the path. They've been doing it all the time they've been with Jesus. So this can be a warning mainly to us who are the believers. And it's a comfort to us to know that we are following Jesus, who we know to be the Son of God. But we need to present Jesus' words faithfully, I think. We can't just randomly pick a verse out of Scripture and just make it say what we think it's saying. We can't just say this is what all of the unbelievers in the world must suddenly believe or believe at some point in their life, otherwise they're going to hell. We can't do that. That is disrespectful to all of the people that Jesus loves and died for. It's really another way when Jesus says he is, no one comes to the Father except by me, it's really another way that Jesus is saying no one comes to God except through God. Ponder that one a little bit. If we as Christians believe Jesus is the Son of God and he was incarnated onto this planet, then if we are to find God, we are, he is actually saying, you'll find God through God. You won't find God through any other way. But when you come to God, you'll find God. And he says that he showed them who God is and he represents God. So this is not, this is not um, heretical. This is simply a bit of a mind twister, yes. Bit of a bit of a try and get your head around it thing, yes, it definitely is. But this is what he's really saying. And he doesn't even state that those coming to the Father through him, even though what they're doing is coming exclusively, he simply claims that whatever God is doing in the world to know and redeem and love and restore the world, it's happening through him, whether we know it or not. And I'm sure I didn't know it and I still don't fully know it. I don't understand it. I, I can't comprehend. It's too vast for my mind to be able to understand how it can be. But I believe and I have faith that it is so. So wouldn't Jesus' love, God's love, extend to all those other people who are likewise just as ignorant 
as I am. Jesus is the way. Yes, Jesus is. But whether we understand it and know it, I guess is really irrelevant. Second question that this scripture poses, and there's many more than three, he says, don't you believe that I'm in the Father and that the Father is in me? And that's verse 10 of chapter 14. This one used to, used to bug me. <laughs> I really tried to get my head around it. I could not figure out how can you be in something but still not in it and it's in you and you are in it and it just sort of went, oh, I'm, I'm losing it here. <laughs> my head's going round in circles and circles and circles. And then I had... What would it be probably about five years ago? This amazing experience that was just enlightening. I suddenly got it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it to you, but some of you probably have experienced this yourself. I, I was walking through nature and I was just looking around myself and I was just filled with God. I could, I could feel God's presence everywhere. And just suddenly, and I'm feeling it all my, oh, no, I'm feeling it again now. The presence of God, I realised, was around me and out there, but it was also in me. It was what was welling up inside me. It was like, it was real. And I was like, in this, and it was in me. And I went, oh, that's what you're talking about. <laughs> That's what this is about. And maybe some of you have realised this a lot earlier than what I did. It took me, took me many years of my Christian faith to get this one. But I just, I suddenly realised that we are all one. This planet is God's creation and it's all his creation. And God is here with us. And God is not just with us, God is in us. So every cell of our being is all just flooded with the energy of God and the spirit of God. And that to me is exciting. And now everywhere I go, I, I can step into that place. I can step into it. And it enables me to see it in other people's faces more, in other people more. I sort of, I feel closer to them. It's, it's been this most rewarding experience and I love it. So that's one other question that you may or have had at some point or even still have. And third, last question, but still just a, a simple one. This is, this is my testimony way back in 1968. And Jesus says, whatever you, <clears throat> and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask anything in my name and I'll do it. And that's verses 13 and 14. And without going into graphic detail, I may have a chance at some other time. Our family in, at that time, just briefly, my dad had, had been in an accident and killed a guy on a motorbike who was a friend of mine. And we were reeling as a family. He left the, the scene of the accident and was on charges. So we were, we were, we were beside ourselves. We were not believers. None of, none of the family, oh, well, probably still were at that time, still aren't, only myself. But I had been given a, a Bible um, by my godmother, who felt it was her duty to give me a Bible and um, as a godmother. And so in my desperation, I grabbed the Bible off the bookshelf, went into my room, let it just fall open. It opened up at, at John 14. And I started reading. And it, it really puzzled me because... Yes, and no, I'm not advocating everybody does this, by the way, but I took it at its word. And it says, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. And so I took that scripture and I went to God and I said, okay, God, you, if you are what I'm reading here, then you are hearing me, you know what's going on and I need you now. You know what I'm, what's going on. So I need you, you need you need to give me peace. I, I need this peace. Now, I know this is not probably part of always in, of the Uniting Church, but what happened to me as a non-Christian at that point in time, just understand, not knowing anything about scripture, not knowing anything about faith in God or Christianity or anything, I took that scripture and then one, when I'd said those words, okay, you need to give me peace, show me. 
I started speaking in this really strange way. It was the most bizarre thing at the time that I can possibly imagine. Started, I was, it was just like this, these words were coming out that I couldn't understand, did not know what I was talking about. They were coming out of my mouth. And then coming out of my mouth, part of me, it was almost like I could see myself. Part of me is going, what has happened here? What this is, but then I also knew that this experience was of God because I just asked for something. I just literally asked that I be shown that God was real and that have peace. And so here's me, and I'm not knowing, I didn't even have a clue what this was, speaking in this really weird way, feeling absolutely ecstatic, not knowing when it was going to stop, if it was going to stop, or whether I'd cracked, whether I'd turned into some sort of loopy person. Didn't have a clue. And then eventually, of course, it did stop. And I knew without a word of a doubt, and still do to this day, that was God. Changed my life right at that time and said, hey, you need to take these scriptures seriously. You need to take them seriously. So I took myself off to the Anglican church and there's a whole lot of the rest of the story there. I wanted to share that with you. I hesitate sometimes sharing that to uh, people within the Uniting Church because it's not necessarily um, in some circles accepted as something that is kosher, I guess. Other people I know do accept it. When I went to the Anglican Church, though, at that time, it was not accepted at all and I was told that it was of the devil and yet, I could not believe it was of the devil because it wasn't the devil that I was asking for this experience. I was asking God. God had touched me. And right to this very, very day, it is an experience that I can never deny. I'm grateful that God touched me in that way. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And through all the ups and downs in my life, God has always been there and always will be. Your journey may not be the same as mine, and that's okay. We all have a journey that God has given us or that we accept in our own way. They're not all the same. I'd like to play another song now. with me footprints in the sand and help me understand where I'm going you walked with me when I was all alone with so much unknown along the way and then I just say, I promise you.
is Maya, and today I'm going to be talking about some important stuff like Jesus making the planet. And what do we need to do with the planet? We need to look after the planet because we need to look after what Jesus made. Like if someone made something for us, was like, and they told this was really hard, so please don't break it. And it was really hard for me to work on. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't pull it and rack it apart. Like, like what, the planet? Yeah, mm. like the planet. If and you did that to the planet, that would not be good because Jesus made this planet for us to live on. Okay, very good. And then what, what did you learn about today from that reading? What was those two C, big C words? Yes. Climate. Climate change. Climate change. I and learned what does, about. What did you learn about climate change? What is climate change? Climate change is like when people work on the factory, it makes cloud, and the clouds come all around because the, the smoke makes really lots of clouds, so it comes around the earth. And it makes it hot like you're in a blankie. Yeah, it makes what 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 does that what's that called? What's another big word that you learnt that clouds are called? Um greenhouse gas. So it, you said it covers the earth and what happens to the earth? It gets hot and it melts things in the water like cans and and big water in big like rocks in the ocean yeah and then what's going to end up happening the water is going to rise up because all those things in there it rises and rises and rises and what happens it splashes all over our planet it's hard for us to live because the water and you do not know where it's going to come out from maybe underneath your door because there's little lines of where your door is it could come past your door and in case just don't leave your back door open or your front door in case this happens and it comes in your house and you, even if you have a baby sister or baby brother thank so you, you maya and then you've you've done a you you've um draw you draw a picture didn't you who's in your picture um that is jesus he made everything he made the planet for us to live on and to take care of <clears throat> thank you maya bye what we're going to do now is to just pray silently thinking about the fact that god did make this planet maya did a great job <laughs> from a six-year-old's perspective Let's just close our eyes for a short while and just contemplate the gift of the planet to us. Thank you, Lord, that we've been given such a beautiful place to live our lives. We know that some in this world don't have quite the same beauty around them, but nonetheless, they've been given life. And your wish is that we have life and life abundantly. No matter where we stand with the science of the climate at the moment, Help us to love your creation and your creatures. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Creator of all living things, hear our prayers. We pray that you help us to cleanse, conserve and share. Teach us to care for the gift of water. We pray that you come and heal your people and the waters. We know that you are already here and present amongst us. Make us your hands and your feet. 
to help you. We, help, we, we pray that you help us to sow, till and harvest with care. Teach us to live gently on the land. Giver of life, we pray for all your people. Come and heal this land. Help us to live justly, simply and wisely. Teach us to care for the gift of air. Breath of life. Help us to heal the air. We pray for your people to care for the earth. Amen. One last song, then the benediction, and then I'll break us all into groups. At least I'll try. <laughs> presence of our mothering God be within you.
May love and mercy radiate from within you. And may the comfort and counsel of the Holy Spirit sustain you today and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.